Hi you guys, I'm Leanne and I'll be your instructor for your lesson today. We're really excited about today's lesson and we think you're going to love it. As always, make sure that you guys are working on the map that's provided in the box when you're working on your table. Make sure that you put your name on your project legibly because there's going to be a lot of you guys coming in and bringing stuff to us. So we want to make sure that we know whose is whose. And lastly, make sure that you clean up really well after each lesson. A bucket of water and a sponge and just a quick wipe down of the mat. Should be all you need. All right, we're excited. Let's get started. This is a lesson plan for our butterflies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the materials that you're going to need for this is you're going to find a butterfly template in your box. Um, it's not going to be cut out, so I will ask that you guys use scissors from the house. You'll use your cutting tool, you'll use a fork, your paintbrush, a sponge, and a seashell or anything kind of to texturize with. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to cut out our butterflies. So I'm going to take here and just hold it in. I'm going to work around the template just to cut out our butterflies. Gently peel back the template and take away my excess clay. And just set that to the side and we can set our first one to the side also. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the second piece of clay. So we're going to end up with two exact copies of the butterfly. So I'm just using this edge right around it. Moving through, this is my cutting edge of the tool right here on the plastic part, and it's just slicing through like a knife would. Get done, and gently I'll peel that off. I'm going to put that to the side, and I'm going to peel away my excess. Now you guys can take the time, you see that it's not perfect on those edges, take the time to kind of smooth it out with your finger here, just so there's not any rough edges. I know that we've talked about this in class before, once these get glazed, these little rough edges have, can become very sharp when you put that glaze on them, so we just want to make sure that we go around everything nice and smooth everything out. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're about to texturize all these two, so it'll be okay. All right, so for the first butterfly, what I'm going to ask you to do is you're going to go ahead and just texturize it. So I love to seashell in your guys' box, but you guys can grab anything that you want from outside. You can take a look in the yard, pine cones, sticks. You can use your implements that you have here. But I'm just going to ask that you kind of take here and you want to texturize all these wings. So I'm using the side of the shell here and just pressing in and making an imprint of the seashell, or I can also use the side of it, and that's gonna create some interesting technique. Because remember when we glaze these, the way that the glaze pools or kind of fills in those cracks is really gonna create some interest and some deeper color, giving us some variety in our piece. So you guys take as much time as you'd like on this. I'm just kind of quickly doing it so we can show you how it goes. Okay, once I texturize this one, I'm going to gently kind of peel it off, stick it to the side, and I'm going to go to my second one. On this one, I think I'm going to use some of the tools that you guys have from your box. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to use the edge of this, and I'm just kind of pushing in. Looks like little polka dots, doesn't it? Coming in, and I'm pressing down. That kind of gives it this texture. What happens if I overlapped those? give it a little bit more depth, and I'm going to start to get some really kind of interesting patterns that are happening along these wings. Same thing, it's kind of coming in and texturizing. So when I get done, so we have two copies of the same. 
Now I want you guys just to choose whichever one you want, whichever one maybe you don't think is the strongest texture wise. We are going to start adding some pieces and in an additive form, start adding some pieces on there to create some shapes for the butterfly wings. So I'm gonna take here, and I'm gonna take my scrap that I had from earlier. So when you guys take this off and you cut it away, keep that scrap flat. So if it happens where you rolled it up, we can roll it out too again. You guys can kind of flatten it out on your own. But we'll come in here and just kind of create a variety of shapes. choose which butterfly I'd like to attach it to. And remember, whenever you guys put two pieces of clay together, you always slip and score. So I'm gonna kind of place these on here, and I'm gonna score the back side just using my fork, roughing up that surface edge. And if you happen to cut some really small pieces, you can always just use your cutting tool too to score that back side of it. And with your container slip that came with your kit and your paintbrush, I'm gonna gently paint some on. I'm going to come here and press to get a pretty good attachment. You should see that slip kind of ooze out of those sides, and that means that we have a nice attachment to it. I'm going to come across, and I'm going to do the exact same, same thing on the other side, because butterflies have symmetry, which means that they're the same on each side. They're known as bilateral symmetry, so if I folded this in half, everything's the same on both sides. So I'm gonna to try to kind of mimic our wings so they're close to the same on each side. Again, I'm gonna press here and pressing in. Apply to pressure to kind of go from there. Come down here. I'm not gonna go as intricate as I did with this one, just for time safety, but if I would wanna kinda of add some more into here to kinda of add onto this to create some visual texture and some interest in it. Now, you guys texturize these also. So kinda of come in here and you can do line work, you can do, you could find things from outside where you could like kinda of press in a piece of pine cone, anything like that, you could draw into these. However you guys kind of want to create and make this uniquely yours it is your option. I'm just going to do a little bit of crisscrossing onto it. Okay, I'm going to put both of these to the side for right now and move on to the next step. With your extra scrap that you guys have, I want you to roll out three coils. So we're going to start with, again, I'm just going to squeeze this clay between my fingers like this, kind of elongating it. Then I'm going to start in the center here, and with rolling with my fingers, I'm rolling out and pushing that clay, that outer edge. You notice this belly is kind of fatter in the middle of it. That's where we're pushing the clay from. So we want to make sure that we roll our index fingers here, we're rolling that clay and pushing our fingers out. Rolling that clay, pushing those fingers out. So I'm going to start with two that are about the size of my pinky, and I'll cut this one in half. We don't need too long of coils and put it to the side. Now I'm going to do one more and this one I want the size of about my index finger or my thumb. So same thing, I'm squeezing that clay between my fingers to make sure I get all that air, those air bubbles out. Kind of elongate it and then I'm going to start in the center, roll out. Start in the center, rolling out. So we're pretty thick right there. So I'm going to stop there and kind of Put that to the side. Now my bottom butterfly is gonna, we're gonna put these in. If you see this butterfly, we've stuck both of them together, bending up one set of wings to create kind of a 3D look to it. So I'm gonna place the one that I texturized onto the bottom and I'm gonna score 
the center of it and slip the middle. Now I'm going to place the one that I added the extra pieces onto for that kind of relief and I'm going to push into here and I'm just going to push into the center. It doesn't matter if these wings flop down because since we didn't slip and score it, they're not going to adhere because we're just going to push into the middle with my index finger and I'm just pushing in there and applying some pretty good pressure. I'm going to do the same thing here where I'm going to score the center again. Apply slip. And now I'm going to take the fatter of my coils, and that's my body, and I'm going to do the same thing where I apply pressure in the center, and I want to see that slip kind of, you see that slip just oozing out of those sides there? We know that we've got a pretty good attachment there. Then I'm just going to cut this off because it's a little long for me, and I can shape this to a rounder so its head doesn't look so flat later on. Okay, now we're going to take our two smaller coils here that we have. I'm just going to move this up for you guys. <clears throat> our two skinnier coils, and I'm going to score and score and slip these on each side. Now, gently lifting up one side of the wing, <clears throat> I'm going to place the coil underneath here and pressing in, I'm going to attach that to that back wing and I'm just starting at the top and moving down and moving down because I think we've talked about this before, you want to start in the middle here because then you'd end up with too much on these sides. You want to start on one side here on the top and move it down. That way the, the clay, when it expands, it grows with it all the way out to that edge. And you can cut this excess off and move to the other side. Now I'm going to come from the other side. And the same thing, I'm just pressing in. And remember, I'm starting on one side and moving to the other. And you're going to see this clay kind of move and grow. I'm push it all the way to the edge, get to the end, and just cut this excess off. Come over, place it in front of you. Now you guys can kind of decide how big, if you want your wings up to there, if you want to fold them back a little bit, but that coil, what it's doing, it's not only helping support the fact that we, that the joints between these two sticking together, it also gives that lift, so it has that 3D effect. Now you guys can add antennas if you'd like, you can add eyes, it's up to you to add these little excess ones to make the butterfly kind of yourself, your own. So remember, whatever you guys add will want to slip and score so that those pieces stay on. So I'm gonna give my butterfly some seriously large eyes right now. And I think I'll just put some big ones in there. He looks a little worried, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> and now for antenna, same thing. I'm gonna just score on the tops of the heads. And I'm gonna slip. I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna add, and when you put this on, you see where it's pretty thin right there? I want you guys to really kind of wiggle that on there, and that's going to give it a little bit thicker of an edge. There you go, and there you go, and that is it. <clears throat> and also, one other option, if you guys don't want to add these antennas on, as we know sometimes things break off and since we're transporting, you guys can also just put little holes in the tops of the heads right here with this tool or I'll send you guys with a needle tool today or with a tine, tine of your fork kind of down. Let me grab a needle tool. Kind of moving in and we could add wire later on and place and add antennas that way too. It's your guys' choice. Just remember if you do add these small antennas there is a chance that they could break off and transport. So if you're wanting antennas, you might just want to add those holes on the top and we can add little wire ones after the firing. Uh, and those are our butterflies.